Welcome. The common filter is probably the most famous implementation of the base filter. This is because the common filter is incredibly powerful due to its optimality, computational efficiency, and its adaptability to various problems. In this video, we'll cover the key aspects of the traditional common filter and how it's derived from the base filter. The Bayes filter has an entire taxonomy of different filters based on what assumptions are made. The Gaussian filter is a renowned filter because it implements the probability distributions as Gaussians. There are four different Gaussian filters and we'll be starting with the simplest one called the common filter today. First, we need to define the motion and sensor models. Here, xt is our state at time t, and x0 is the initial state. ut is the control input for state xt minus 1, and wt is the noise of the process. On the sensor model side, we have yt is the measurements we receive, and nt is the sensor noise. The first key assumption made compared to the general base filter is that our nonlinear f and g motion and sensor model functions are now linear. As such, a, b, and c are constant matrices. In addition, to ensure that the probability distributions remain Gaussian throughout time step updates, we require the initial state to be Gaussian. It is distributed with mean mu naught and covariance sigma naught. We also require the noise to be additive Gaussian noise. Recalling the base filter algorithm, we have as input our belief at t minus 1 alongside our action input and measurements. We perform a prediction step that projects our belief one step forward according to the motion model. Then, we correct for this using the measurement we received to generate our belief at time t. We now need to actually compute these equations under the assumptions we made in the motion and sensor models. Okay, so in the prediction step, we need to use the motion model to compute p of xt given xt minus 1 and ut. Since we are given xt minus 1 and ut, if we freeze this in our motion model, we see that the resulting probability distribution is simply the random variable wt shifted up by a constant. Thus, the resulting distribution has the same covariance as wt, but now has a mean of at times xt minus 1 plus bt times ut. Now we have the integral of two normal distributions that both depend on xt minus 1. Note the notation of these normal distributions. We will explicitly include the random variable as the first term since the mean and covariance may depend on other random variables. I believe the process of deriving how this computation is done is clever and is instructive. However, the actual manipulations at each step, such as the rearranging and matrix multiplications, are tedious and non-educational, so they will be ignored. First, let's expand out these normal distributions and combine them to form LT as the exponents of the combined distribution. Note that any distribution where it is e to the power of f of x, where f of x is quadratic, is by definition a Gaussian distribution. Our goal is to find a decomposition LT is equal to LT of xt plus LT of xt minus 1 and xt. If we can find such a form, we can see that in the integral, the first term is not affected by xt minus 1, so it can be moved outside. And then, if we make lt of xt minus 1 and xt a normal distribution, since it's quadratic, then we can simply absorb the integral into eta, because it is a constant when you integrate xt minus 1. Notice that the etas are indeed not the same, but since it's for normalization, we don't care too much and leave it as the same symbol. So we want to take this LT term and write it as a quadratic function for xt minus 1. To find the mean of the distribution, we want to find where the lowest point of the quadratic is. So we apply simple calculus and take the derivative, set it equal to 0, then solve. The curvature is defined as the second derivative, and the covariance of such a quadratic is minus 1 over the curvature. So with the mean and covariance, we can rewrite our desired term in a Gaussian format. Thus, to find lt of xt, we simply rearrange our equation. Putting this all together now, we apply the definition of the normal distribution to make it integrate to 1. Thus, if we rearrange for the integral term, it does indeed equal a constant. Following, we are left with another eta and a single exponential term. We now notice that lt of xt is also quadratic in xt. Thus, we repeat the process of finding the mean and covariance as we did on the last slide to arrive at, what do you know, another Gaussian distribution, where we will label the intermediate distribution with mean mu bar and covariance sigma bar. Now looking at the correction step, we need to combine the product of these two distributions. Similar to the motion model, we have p of yt given xt, which is simply a shifted Gaussian of the noise nt with a new mean of ct times xt. 
Then we simply use our trusty process we've been doing to arrive at the final covariance and mean on the screen. One caveat is that in high dimensional state spaces, computing the sigma bar inverse may be extremely intensive and may result in numerical instability. Thus, we define the common gain to be sigma times c times q inverse. Writing it this way, there are some beautiful manipulations and cancellations that will allow us to write the common gain as this form in the orange box. Finally, we have our covariance and mean after the correction step without computing the state covariance inverse. Now to summarize our common filter, we have as input a Gaussian belief alongside a control input ut and measurement yt. Our prediction step to compute mu bar and sigma bar are very straightforward. Then in the correction step, we first compute the common gain and then correct our bell bar belief to output another Gaussian mu t and sigma t. And that's it. That's the derivation of the common filter. Note that this recursive algorithm is the optimal predictor in the assumptions we have laid out. Linear state and measurements, initial Gaussian distribution, and additive Gaussian noise. We will see how to generalize this to nonlinear functions for the state and measurement models in the next videos with the other common filter variations. Thank you for watching and see you next time.